Let's look at a modern web app. We have something like Rails, a web framework that talks to a database like Postgres and stands behind a reverse proxy like Nginx. The app probably uses some form of a queue that communicates to an intermediate store and the app itself might use Redis for caching. If we have any search, we probably wanted to go to a separate solution like Elast, which also depends on the database. And finally, if we have non-trivial UI, we might want to have a front-end framework that is served without going through our web app, but contacts it to get the data. All these moving parts have a lot of configurations, dependent libraries, and even binaries that make them work together. But all of these have to be well-tuned for various environments, be it on a development machine, where we appreciate quick development, or in our continuous integration environment, where we're looking for testing components in isolation, or in the production-like environments, where we're interested in performance and fault tolerance. How can we replicate all the settings and configurations consistently? How can we trust the CI and how can we make sure that if it works locally, it works for our users? One way to do that is to package the whole suite as a virtual machine, similar to the production environment. Unfortunately, it involves a lot of overhead, since running an application inside a virtual machine means running a whole new operating system atop the existing one. Enter LXC, short for Linux containers. LXC and later alternatives like libcontainer, libvirt, or systemd and spawn bypass this limitation by giving the app direct access to the host system. The app is run as an isolated process that can use the resources of the host system with no detriment to security. The success of these virtualization technologies led to the development of Docker. Docker is a tool that takes the container's approach one step further by creating a safe and easy-to-use interface for running containers, provisioning images, and sharing work. Here's how it works. On a piece of hardware, we run a host operating system that can access it. On top of the OS, we run the Docker engine that provides access to the resources of the host operating system. Our applications are now able to use these resources through the Docker engine. Compare that to the virtual machine approach, where we have the same hardware and operating system, and a hypervisor that manages the resources, providing them to another guest operating system that would in turn run our application. In both cases, the app environment is built on top of the virtualization technology. With a VM, we need to fully boot the guest operating system to run our app. In contrast, Docker uses the system we're already running, so instead of minutes, we boot in milliseconds. Where is the configuration and the environment stored then? That's what is called an image. An image is a file system and a set of configurations that can be used to boot a container and run our app inside it. The container represents the actual running context, which constantly changes, whereas the image doesn't change. It's more of a template for running your app inside a container. The more apps we have, the more images we use. These images are tagged and used for a specific purpose. We can put those images in a registry to be used by others, but what would be stored in the registry is not the actual image with all its dependencies installed, but rather a recipe called a Docker file that can be used to create the image. In Docker files, we can build images on top of other images from the registry, and in we can even run our own private registry. We can also use one of the many publicly available images on the official registry. Let's say we want to build a JavaScript tab that runs on Node. We can go to store.docker.com and search for an image that ships with Node installed. We can see that there is an official image for Node apps that we can download and use as a basis for building our own images. Now let's try a real example. We want to create a simple app that uses Node to print something on the screen. We want to run this app inside a Docker container, and we can start by creating an image. Assuming you have Docker installed, go to an empty directory and create an empty file named Docker file. The Docker file is a recipe for creating an image. And in the Docker file, we can specify what is the base image and that is used for creating the new image based on this Docker file. So uh, in this case, we'd like to write a simple node app. Therefore, we leverage that node image that we just saw. So we could type in from node latest 
which will pull the latest version of the node image from the public registry. And another thing we would want to do is probably run a command. I'd use a simple command now uh, using cmd, uh, this is specifies the command, and I'd run node dash dash eval uh, console log hello world. Uh, this is a very simple node app, but the point of it is to see how the dependencies are installed and how we can ship this app. So now we can run docker build with a tag, we'd call it hello stack, and we'd, call, we'd put a directory, at, and now we'd have to wait as Docker is executing all the steps from our Docker file. For example, in here, it pulls the node latest. It takes a while, so I'll fast forward. Make sure you have some hard disk space before you start this. So now the image is complete, and now we can run Docker images to see all the images that we have. And now we have two images. We have one called node because it was pulled as a dependency. It has 654 megs. And then we have another image that is built on top of that and is separately shippable, uh, which is called hello stack. Now we can load this image and run it by using docker run hello stack. And it will execute the command that we specified in the docker file and will tell us the hello world thing. Yay, we just ran a docker app. So here are the other things that we can do with the Docker file. We can specify not only the commands we can run, you can specify uh, some of the things that you need to run as prerequisites to running your apps. For example, you could do a apt get update or install image magic or something like that. You could open some ports, do some system configuration. You could access the host file system by transferring it inside the container, and you could set environment variables. You can do quite a lot of things with within the Docker file. But the important thing here is that we would write a Docker file that we would use to build an image that would be then used to boot a container inside which our app will be ran. And remember, this boot process takes a very short time. And this is pretty much what Docker is.